Your decrees are wonderful, therefore I obey them with my whole heart. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord is here, and his Spirit is with us. Welcome to our service here at St Hilda's Church in Ampleforth on the seventh Sunday after Trinity. This is our benefice service and later on today others will gather here in church from our benefice again for the Eucharist. So we pray that this service online is also a reaching out to you that you feel a part and know you are prayed for and belong with our one offering of our praise and worship today day in our benefice. In our gospel passage from Matthew and in the reading we have from Kings this morning, we are reminded that all belongs to God, all things belong to God. And so even the time that we have all of time belongs to God and the time that we are each making to be with our Heavenly Father and one another in prayer is again our acknowledgement that that time belongs to God, and we are fed by that acknowledgement in our Lord. So we then bring ourselves to our Heavenly Father today, and we pray together the prayer of preparation. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts, by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ said, The first commandment is this, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is the only Lord. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. The second is this, love your neighbour as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Amen. Lord, have mercy. God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, Jesus Christ, to save us from our sins, to be our advocate in heaven and to bring us to eternal life. Let us confess our sins in penitence and faith, firmly resolved to keep God's commandments and to live in love and peace with all. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour in thought and word and deed, through weakness, through negligence, through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may serve you in newness of life, to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you. Pardon and deliver you from all your sins, Confirm and strengthen you in all goodness and keep you in life eternal through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And so for the forgiveness of sin, the assurance of God's presence, we say the Gloria together. Glory to God in the highest and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you. We give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Collect for the Seventh Sunday after Trinity. Let us pray. Lord of all power and might, 
the author and giver of all good things, graft in our hearts the love of your name, increase in us true religion, nourish us with all goodness, and of your great mercy keep us in the same. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our first Bible reading today is from the first book of Kings, chapter 3, verses 5 to 12. At Gibeon, the Lord appeared to Solomon in a dream by night, and God said, Ask what I should give you. And Solomon said, You have shown great and steadfast love to your servant, my father David, because he walked before you in faithfulness, in righteousness, and in uprightness of heart towards you. And you have kept for him this great and steadfast love, and have given him a son to sit on his throne today. And now, O Lord my God, You have made your servant king in place of my father David, although I am only a little child. I do not know how to go out or to come in. And your servant is in the midst of the people whom you have chosen, a great people, so numerous they cannot be numbered or counted. Give your servant, therefore, an understanding mind to govern your people able to discern between good and evil. For who can govern this, your great people? It pleased the Lord that Solomon had asked this. God said to him, Because you have asked this, and have not asked for yourself long life or riches, or for the life of your enemies, but have asked for yourself understanding to discern what is right, I now do according to your word. Indeed, I give you a wise and discerning mind. No one like you has been before you, and no one like you shall arise after you. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus put before the crowd another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed that someone took and sowed in his field. It is the smallest of all the seeds, but when it has grown, it is the greatest of shrubs and becomes a tree so that the birds of the air come and make nests in its branches. He told them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like yeast, that a woman took and mixed in with three measures of flour until all of it was leavened. The kingdom of heaven is like treasure hidden in a field, which someone found and hid. Then, in his joy, he goes and sells all that he has and buys that field. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant in search of fine pearls. On finding one pearl of great value, he went and sold all that he had had and bought it. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a net that was thrown into the sea and caught fish of every kind. When it was full, they drew it ashore, sat down, and put the good into baskets, and threw out the bad. So it will be at the end of the age, the angels will come out and separate the evil from the righteous, and throw them into the furnace of fire, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Have you understood all this? They answered, Yes. And he said to them, Therefore every scribe who has been trained for the kingdom of heaven is like the master of a household who brings out of his treasure what is new and what is old. This is the Gospel of the Lord. 
Praise to you, O Christ. So may it be given to me to speak in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. <clears throat> if God came to you in a dream at night and said, ask what I should give you, I wonder what each of us would say. In our reading from Kings this morning, this is what happens uh, to Solomon However, before we ponder this event, we remember that earlier in this same passage, it says Solomon loved the Lord, walking in the statutes of his father David. So the Lord's appearing to Solomon in this dream, offering to him whatever he wanted, takes place in the context of an already established relationship between God and Solomon. Solomon is fairly new to the throne. He has a striking awareness of his youth and the task of rule he has been given. He knows too that the character of his kingship is as a servant. Solomon's words show he has perceived the great, mighty and numerous people of whom he is now king and that importantly, they are God's chosen people. With deep perception then, in response to God's offer of whatever he wants, Solomon asks for wisdom. Give to your servant, therefore, an understanding mind to govern your people, able to discern between good and evil. For who can govern this, your great people? Now Solomon's request for wisdom doesn't so much come from his awareness of the great and difficult task he has, but more from his awareness that he is a servant in the midst of the people whom God has chosen. Solomon is king of what is God's. And Solomon is aware of this, and this is why he asks for wisdom, a right judgment. Because to rule to serve what is God's, needs God's wisdom. Now I think Solomon's request here is deeply perceptive, revealing an understanding that everything belongs to God. Now this is also picked up in the words we use, we pray at worship every Sunday. All things come from thee, O God, and of thine own do we give thee. So I wonder how Solomon's words, his request for God's, for wisdom to carry out God's task in a godly way, sit with you today. Solomon's words, I consider, are also a form of prayer, and they remind me of my ordination to the diaconate and the priesthood, both that took place at York Minster. Now, certainly, the ordination services make very clear that Christ's flock, bought by the price of Christ's blood, is being entrusted to the priest, the deacon, a cure of souls that the priest shares with the bishop, and that as a servant of Christ, an account of how then the priest has cared for Christ's flock with the bishop will be asked. Archbishop Stephen's Cotterell, Stephen Cottrell's recent book on priesthood highlights this too, which I must admit was somewhat overwhelming, especially when I read it in lockdown, when ministry and mission moved online. And I remember certainly praying a form of Solomon's words for wisdom when I was ordained. So I wonder what times you can recall in your uh, life with God when you have in earnest had a task before you that you were was aware was not really your task but God's and you were being led into that, drawn into that, called into that as a servant of God. And I wonder what times for you when this has happened. So continuing then this theme of 
the call, the request for right judgment, and the knowledge and understanding that everything belongs to God, we then come to our gospel passage. And in that gospel passage, again from Matthew, we have no less than five parables. Five parables that are telling us uh, different insights into the kingdom of God. Jesus is telling us through the mustard seed, the yeast, the hidden treasure, the pearl of great price, and the net holding fish of every kind, something about the kingdom of God. He wants to, Jesus wants to reveal what is hidden and yet present so that his hearers can be inspired to come to recognize the wisdom of God in all that surrounds them, in all that they are a part of. And so in a way, once we recognize God in all that is around us, that all, that all belongs to God, we can then realize that we are called to participate, to serve God in the whole of creation, in all that we are a part. But I just wonder for a moment if you hear those words, the kingdom of heaven is like, the kingdom of God is like, what for you immediately comes to mind? What words do you follow after the kingdom of heaven is like? Jesus, in his choice of the mustard seed, the yeast, the hidden treasure and the precious pearl, is touching upon a truth that is deeply wonderful and inspiring. Think of the mustard seed for a moment, the smallest of seeds, and yet when it has grown, it is the greatest of shrubs and becomes a tree. And it then makes possible life and the nest for the birds, for them to find a home that there is a mystery hidden within the small and hidden that leads to ever more abundant life. Think of the yeast. Yeast makes flour rise. Yeast is a key ingredient for making bread light and fluffy. And the kingdom of heaven is transformative and uplifting. So without God's reign, life would be flat and dull. It is the presence of God's kingdom that empowers God's people to rise above life's circumstances. And let's be honest, in our current situation now, there's this interweaving, this thankful interweaving of God's mystery, of God's presence, of the presence of God's kingdom in the very situation we find ourselves in. And that presence of God's kingdom is bringing life into that situation, even into the circumstances we now have. So God's power is at work in the small, in the everyday, bringing forth an abundance, an energy, a life. And this same mysterious energy is active in all of creation, not only in the mustard seed, or the yeast. And Jesus wants us to be inspired to seek and desire the kingdom of God as we desire to be in union with God. And so importantly to recognize how then they and we are drawn into the reality of the kingdom of God and that it's active around us and we have a part to play in that. And then we have that last parable, don't we? That Jesus says the kingdom of heaven is like a net that caught fish of every kind. And when it was full, they drew it ashore, sat down and put the good into baskets, but threw out the bad. Here we have an echo of the Bible passage from Matthew last week, the parable of the weeds and the wheat. And I think we need to recognize and to remember that the parable here of the net, of again an echo of judgment, of a sorting out of the good from the bad. 
the good and the evil, is that this parable follows on from the four before it that, that speak of joy in response to knowing of God in creation, of God's salvation in Jesus, the joyfulness of the merchant that knows he has the pearl of great price, and so he goes and sells everything else. That sense of that hidden treasure. And so, but in that, that is also the kingdom of God, but also judgment is part of that kingdom of God, the kingdom of heaven. And all of those aspects are speaking about the one and same kingdom of God, and so it is, it's an important tension that needs to be held together. So through our baptism, we are given God's spirit. And when we live a life of faith, we begin to actively participate in the work that the spirit is doing to bring all things into an, an alignment with God's will, will and the purpose for all creation. So one of the gifts of the Holy Spirit is wisdom, right judgment, to know what is God's and then to serve God in this. So today, I pray that each of us is rich in this wisdom, to see that all things belong to God and to know that we are called to take part in this and to serve God in his creation. Amen. And so we affirm our faith in the words of the Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. So let us pray. To God who loves the world that he has made, let us pray for ourselves and for all people. As you have given to your people the gift of faith, make that faith powerful as a witness to your love. So we pray today for Archbishops Justin and Stephen, Pope Francis, the Ecumenical Patriarch Bartholomew, and all church leaders, for the whole of your church, for all the baptised, that we may be constant in prayer and never doubting your power to save. Father, may we be rich in works of mercy and kindness serving you through our love in others, in being good neighbours, in contributing to our communities. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. 
Father, gather into your fold the lost sheep of this world, those who are hard of heart, those who reach out to you but struggle in their faith. Hear those who desire to know you but cannot speak this need. We pray for those who witness your love and your presence to others. For those who disciple one another, we pray that each of us, in the way we live our lives and the wo words we speak, can bear witness to your love and hope and the resurrection, the transformation of new life in Christ. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray for the work of Christian aid, for CAFOD, for missionary agencies, for USPG, for CMS, for those who work hard, and especially at this time, to meet the practical needs of others most vulnerable. Praying especially for those in refugee camps, for those without homes, for those communities ravaged by war and violence. Lord, we pray for your peace there. And we give you thanks, Father, that all people are precious in your sight. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Guide and guard our families and all others with whom we share our lives. We pray for our benefice, for our parishes here, for Stonegrave, for Gilling East, for Oswald Kirk and Ampleforth, for the life of each of these villages, for all the parishes. Bless each home, especially where there is sickness or any other trouble. We pray for those who have asked for prayer, for Jean Thompson, for Richard, for Gareth Thomas, Philippa Mackenzie Smith, Rosemary Greenfield, Anne Friars, Martin Boothroyd. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We prepare in our benefice for the farewell service for Margaret Timbrell, reader and church warden at Stonegrave. And so, Father, we pray for Margaret as she makes arrangements for her move to Dolverton Hall. And we pray for our preparations here in our benefice for her service at Stonegrave. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Bring healing to children, to those who are unwell, for those in pain, for those in our local hospitals at York and Scarborough, for those being cared for at home. We pray especially for their parents, for all loved ones who are caring for people at home today, giving thanks for local nurses, for the residential care homes, and for those who are helping those remain in their homes, for Jeanette, for Suzanne, for Ruby, and for Mayenza and Sophie. Give peace to all unquiet minds and troubled spirits. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray for those who are grieving, and especially for, M for Mike Wilson and for the whole family, for Sue and for the family of June Nicholson. Give peace, Father, to those who have died in recent days and weeks, praying especially for Margaret Wilson and June Nicholson, for those whose anniversaries are remembered today, Mary Revel, Hilda Thompson, Eunice Daniel, Margaret Roundtree, 
Peter Arundale, Ellen McLean, Bob Burns, Edward Hicks, John Skilbeck, and George Collier. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. And Father, we offer to you the life of this day. We give thanks for the recent appointment of a youth and children's worker for this benefice with Helmsley, Kirkdale and the Byland Church Group. And we pray for this furthering of the gospel to our young people in this benefice and the local area. So Father, for this day, we pray that the words we speak, the tasks we do, share your blessing with others. Amen. And so we come to the peace. Christ is our, Christ is our peace. He has reconciled us to God in one body by the cross. We meet in his name and we share his peace. The peace of the Lord be always with you. You might like to take this as an opportunity to share the Lord's peace with those in your household. And if you do not have anyone in your household, then to, then to know the words of the peace of the Lord are with you. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, through your goodness we have this bread to set before you, which earth has given and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, through your goodness we have this wine to set before you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become for us the cup of salvation. Blessed be God forever. Now we come to this sacrifice of clean and contract hearts. Wash me from my sins and cleanse me from my iniquities. It's time to go to the altar of God, the God of my joy and of my delight. Yours, Lord, is the greatness, the power, the glory, the splendor, and the majesty. For everything in heaven and on earth is yours. All things come from you, and of your own do we give you. The Lord is here, and his Spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Father, we give you thanks and praise through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your living Word, through whom you have created all things, who was sent by you in your great goodness to be our Saviour. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he took flesh as your son, born of the Blessed Virgin. He lived on earth and went about among us. He opened wide his arms for us on the cross. He put an end to death by dying for us and revealed the resurrection by rising to new life. So he fulfilled your will and won for you a holy people. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name, forever praising you and saying, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Lord, you are holy indeed, the source of all holiness, Grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit and according to your holy will, these gifts of bread and wine 
may be to us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, who in the same night that he was betrayed took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. And so, Father, calling to mind his death on the cross, his perfect sacrifice made once for the sins of the whole world, rejoicing in his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, and looking for his coming in glory, we celebrate this memorial of our redemption. As we offer you this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, we bring before you this bread and this cup, and we thank you for counting us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. Send your Holy Spirit on your people, and gather into one in your kingdom all who share this one bread and one cup, so that we in the company of the Blessed Virgin Mary, St. Hilda, St. Benedict, St. Oswald, St. Aidan, and all the saints, may praise and glorify you forever, through Jesus Christ, our Lord, by whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory be yours, Almighty Father, for ever and ever. Amen. As our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because by we all share in one bread. Jesus, Lamb of God, have mercy on us. Jesus, bearer of our sins, have mercy on us. Jesus, redeemer of the world, grant us peace. Jesus is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are those who are called to his supper. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word, and I shall be healed. The body of Christ. The blood of Christ. At this stage in our service, it is an invitation to spiritual communion. When um, people are not able um, to be gathered physically to receive the, um, the consecrated bread and the wine sacramentally, that um, there can be through uh, faith and in by, penit by, by, 
in penitence and by faith there can be that prayer, that desire um, to be, to receive Jesus um, spiritually, the spiritual communion of the body and blood of Christ. And so we have a moment um, in the presence and in the context of our Eucharist, that desire to receive Jesus spiritually. Lord, that I may drink and feed on the grace of your love and life. Feed me. Amen. Lord God, whose Son is the true vine and the source of life, ever giving himself that the world may live, may we so receive within ourselves the power of his death and passion, that in his saving cup we may share his glory and be made perfect in his love, for he is alive and reigns now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. And our benefice prayer. God, who made every one, and who may be found in every place, bless our parish and benefice, prosper our attempts to be faithful to you, and draw others to you. Inspire us by the power of your Holy Spirit, that we may be a caring people, the true community of the body of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And so our final blessing. Thank you for uh, joining me in this service. I pray that you are blessed uh, by it, and I pray that you and your families um, are well at this time. The peace of God which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be upon you, your families, your homes and your friends. Amen. And so we go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen.